Hey there, it's Karen, and I'm here doing my video blog. Uh, I wrote one called Extreme Loneliness that I want to share with you, but before I get started, I just wanted to kind of shout out to everybody on the public playground. Uh, I've had some questions about what's happening kind of with the daily videos and with the project, because the art and video phase really didn't get put under the project overview, and we're totally playing that by ear because we haven't done it before on the public record. But uh, submissions should be in tonight for that. Any art and video that has to do with the playground and has to do with our song should be in by tonight at midnight. And then we're going to start editing this week. And I also have some video to shoot as well. So I'll cut myself in between all you guys and stuff. Uh, so that's happening. Uh, another question I had was about relating to the video blogs versus the daily videos. Uh, of course, we are putting up daily videos every single day. And I think we have, I don't know, 120 somewhere around that that we've done for the public playground project so we've done a lot of them I've switched over to doing the video blog this week because I really wanted Frank's uh, topic that he is covering this week to be featured under the daily videos because I think it's really important he's uh, covering the topic of indies in the music business and so he's doing a whole series on that and uh, I've enjoyed listening to him this week you know it's always inspiring for me to, to listen to Frank and him and I are really on the same page, is why we work together uh, on how we feel about the music industry, how we feel about independent artists and independent musicians. And so I, uh, I really encourage you guys, if you haven't uh, gone and looked at, it, at any, any of Frank's videos, uh, it's a really educational series that he's doing. And it's just all about changing your headspace and some of the things you can be doing as an independent artist. So uh, I really wanted him to have that kind of daily video time. But this week we are going to kind of dive into the art and video and stuff like that. So my blog is on extreme loneliness, and it was inspired by Robert Frost. And he had a quote that said, Being the boss anywhere is lonely. Being a female boss in a world of mostly men is especially so. And uh, it stuck out at me just quickly, not because I'm, you know, uh, a big woman's liber, but I, uh, it stuck out to me quickly because I have been one of the only women I know in the recording industry. I know there's a ton of women in the recording industry, but in my personal circles, I don't, I don't run into any. I know of a couple, but I don't run into any. I've worked with men for most of my life, and I love, I love men, and I love women. I love everybody, and um, it's just there are some challenges that, that happen being a woman in the recording industry. It's kind of an old 70s mentality that's still sticking around. <laughs> so that quote jumped out at me. But uh, I, wrote, uh, I wrote a blog uh, based on kind of that, and uh, I talked about extreme loneliness when he said just being the boss is lonely. It, it, isn't it amusing that the author of that quote is a man? Now before you slam me, I am not into women's liberation. I'm into something called spiritual liberation or a spiritual awakening. I don't mean this in the way you would think of it, like some bizarre religion or obscure cult. I mean the spirit who awakes and flattens fences, our inner child. Now, whatever religion you want to attribute that to is entirely up to you. What is great about the quote is that it came from a man, and I love that he recognized something about women. But I would be equally as impressed if a person said something profound about an animal or if a woman had insight into a man's world. So it's just to me about, um, just about recognizing just the things that are going on around us and the differences between us. I've always hated that men and women should ever suggest only men understand men issues and women understand women's issues. Lots of people out there are very aware of things which have nothing to do with them. I had a really great conversation with a man who has never been married and he had more insight and more knowledge about how a relationship works than people who have been married for 40 years. You don't have to have your own children to know good parenting from bad. You don't have to be a teacher to instill positive things in many young people. These types of people are observers of life. They are not trying to control it, and they are not looking for anything in return. They have slotted themselves into the bigger picture and are very sensitive towards others. This observer of life will be the first to stop and offer kindness to somebody who appears lonely. They might offer some assistance, or they may just offer up an ear. They might not even approach the person who is lonely, but that person will be on their mind for a really long time. I have had so many of these people in my life when I was extremely lonely. Have you ever been to a barbecue or a family function where there is a young teenager who is sitting alone and looking detached. Feeling lonely doesn't necessarily come from being physically alone. 
I love when someone beats me to approaching them and strikes up a conversation. I've seen lonely people barely tolerate the conversation because they simply just don't feel connected to that person. The aunt or uncle might say something that isn't very helpful, like, cheer up, or the one I hate, turn that frown upside down. It's like, thanks, dude. Come on, it's <laughs> like, that's a game changer. But then a cousin around the same age will show up and say something like, what you playing? And then they talk about the game controller or whatever's in front of them. I've heard so many adults walk by them and say, put the game down and talk to people. <laughs> well, you aren't saying anything remotely interesting, so why should they? People don't tend to feel lonely because they are alone. They tend to feel lonely because they feel alone. This feeling of detachment generally comes from not connecting to anyone around you. You wish you had a partner who was like you. You wish you could hold a conversation with someone who had something in common. Observers of life seem to have the gift of compassion. They generally are not lonely. I believe there is a difference between them and people who stare out the windows or watch things around them to kill time. An observer tends to enjoy people watching. It reminds me of when I go to the Comic Con in San Diego. There's so many people to look at, <laughs> just the costumes and the people. I love people watching. If you look at the numbers in depression rising, it's mind boggling. A lonely person isn't necessarily depressed, although they often go hand in hand. But what the numbers don't show is how many people have escaped it, have moved on to bond with their inner child, and learned to enjoy life again. <laughs> Maturity going down. <laughs> um, if you are also uh, an observer of life, if you love life, if your compassion for people is high, the demand for you will probably surpass the number of doctors needed in the world. If you have some way in your life to take some time from your day to reach out to someone who is lonely or depressed, I encourage you to do this because you are so needed. I've mentioned it before that I feel like I should be paying forward all the love and compassion I've been shown. I have been trying to be a, an observer of life in, instead of trying to control everything. We don't have to be interested in the same things to connect each other, but we can continue to be interested in one another. That tiny bit of compassion could save someone from their extreme loneliness. I know this because someone's compassion saved me. It's lonely at the top between Bieber and Obama, is how I signed off today. Uh, I, I really had, have had quite a funny week. I've had so many conversations about these video blogs, and a lot of people are enjoying them. Some people still like to just read them, that's cool too. But uh, I uh, had somebody say, Karen, you're in the top ten blogs. And I went, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. So I went and checked it out, and uh, if you go to the MySpace blogs, there's, you know, the all categories. And uh, the, the blog was called Time Stealers and Bad Habits that I did this week. <laughs> and uh, what really struck me was, right above me was Justin Bieber, which said um, something like marching towards a million or, or a billion, sorry, a billion. Uh, Bieber's march to a billion, I think that's what it was. And then below me was one by Barack Obama, you know, where it's you know, obviously not Barack's blog, but it's they put up a video of him talking to to everybody in America. And so I'm sandwiched right in between Bieber and, and Obama. <laughs> and uh, at first I just thought it was funny. And then I thought it was really funny. And then I looked at the, uh, the blog title for mine that said Time Stealers and Bad Habits, and then I thought it was enormously funny. And then it just got funnier and funnier on so many levels. And then I thought, well, maybe I should put up a riddle and just say, you know, two of these people I dig, two of these people I don't dig, or, you know, just like, <laughs> something like that. And then I had to catch myself going down that, that road that we tend to go on, and it's exactly my own blog taught me a lesson here, is you, your thoughts automatically take you down this road where you start to make fun of, you start to gossip, you start to badmouth, all these things, what I was talking about, badmouthing our leaders and gossiping, gossiping about celebrities, all these things that I've been preaching about that I hate so much, my thoughts started going there. And it's like, it's just automatic. I can't believe it that, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this every day and yet there go my thoughts. Now, in all fairness, I do not, just to all your, my American friends, I am a guest here under a working visa in America. I am a Canadian citizen and I will not badmouth your president because I have a respect for the country that I am in. So I will not badmouth your president uh, because he's got a hard job and I don't want his job. But Bieber, I have been known on occasion <laughs> to, uh, 
to, um, to, uh, I think call, uh, the Antichrist thing was just in jest. I think I said that one time. But, uh, he, uh, I can't stand Justin Bieber's hair. And I say this from a stylist's point of view. I, I worked as a hairstylist for eight year, years in a salon, and I know my hair always looks like crud, okay, whatever. But the Bieber feather thing, like, I just really, when I looked at Bieber and Brock, I was like, Brock's got the better haircut for sure. <laughs> But then there's me in the top hat, and who I think I am. But uh, so I, I would love nothing more than to get Bieber in a in a barber's chair and just, you know, go back to my barbering that I learned in hairdressing school and just clipper cut. Good clipper cut for him would would do good things. <laughs> so yes, I uh, I can gossip just like everybody else, you know. So my own blog, my own time stealers and bad habits blog, shot me down again today. So, uh, I, I'm, t like I said to you guys before, I'm not all there. It's just this tendency, and, and a lot of things I do is with a heaping amount of humor. And, uh, I just found it enormously, enormously funny. And then I found it enormously, enormously humbling that my own blog would teach me a lesson on all this. And life is super funny to me. <clears throat> so, I have to thank you guys. All the people that have been watching these blogs have put that up into the top 10 category for me to see to have my own lesson hysterical just absolutely hysterical i am uh, humbled <laughs> beyond belief so anyway i thought i'd tune in with you guys again today still learning life lessons on a daily basis oh i uh, had some people asking me for an update on the cello situation i talked this week about how my face snapped off my cello and that was uh, the funniest thing that happened to me all week. And I'm just looking over at this broken thing, my faceless cello. <laughs> and I do want to fix it. But I got a bigger plan for the cello, so I'm not going to fix it right away. I, uh, I need to get it, like, I can't fix it properly from in my apartment. So I need to get it in a better workspace in some time. But I suspect that if the front came off the cello, there's a potential of the back at some point coming off the cello just because it's a really, it's 150 years old or something, this cello, it's really, really old. And I suspect whatever they used to um, hold it together, some concoction, witchcraft concoction, uh, that was holding that thing together uh, is not going to hold up. So I want to take it completely apart and sand down the edges and um, get all that kind of gunk out of there and do it properly with clamps and everything. So it's not going to get fixed right away. It just isn't. In the meanwhile, I'll just play my violins and my piano and stuff. So I thought I'd update you on what's going on with that. So there's no news to tell of the cello in the, the near future here. It's going to be a big overhaul. <laughs> but it was funny, and it's still funny to me. And it's just making all these little noises still. like So funny. Anyway, laughing beyond belief this week, having a good time. And uh, I love uh, hearing from you guys, too. I love getting all this email. And I hope that you aren't feeling this extreme loneliness and, and that you can feel like there are people out there who you can connect to as well, all right? So I will talk to you again tomorrow. And until next time, rock on.